Looking for love, dating, updating your life is almost like searching for your keys. It's always in the last place that you left it. And that's why you need a girly like me to help you find it. Level up with Joshi of the podcast. Hey girlies, welcome back to another podcast episode on the Level Up with Joshia podcast with your girl Joshia. I hope all of the girlies are doing well. So y'all know the routine. We start off with our girl chat and then we get straight into today's episode. Can I tell you, I don't know what's going on in my life right now. And that's not any, that's not even in a bad way. But I want every girlie to know when you come to that point inside of your life where you just want to change how you show up as a woman and you finally have that vulnerable conversation with God telling them that you don't know what you're doing and you're just going to trust him and you're not you're no longer going to lean on your own understanding he has ways of putting things together so now now that I'm not leaning on my own understanding and actually seeking God's word and seeking out people that can put God's word in perspective for me when I don't understand, aka my finances. I'm not going to start following the biblical principles in my finances. And now that I actually looked at it, I feel calm. I feel relieved and I wait in expectancy for God to do things in my life. And that's with everything. The same thing with my relationships and everything else. Now, I also want you to know that when you decide to start to figure life on the right path that you're supposed to be on, there are going to be spiritual attacks because the enemy wants to keep you binded. And yesterday, I had such a frigged up day to work that I was starting to question what the hell. And I wanted to prematurely make decisions that really should not be prematurely made because I saw something, a video that popped up on my timeline and I know God was talking to me about not making any hasty decisions because like I am right around the corner or where he needs me to be. Same thing with relationships like I wanted to do my relationships and dating thing differently and for the first time ever I went to the person that I was dating and I was like I want to see how it goes about this way the right way and they agreed and I was like oh my gosh God is just allowing things to just fall right into place and I have no problem taking a step back like how I did to just focus on what it is God wants for me because I no longer care about what I want for me. I want whatever God wants for me in this season. So I'm going to give you some things that I do and I, I did and then I stopped doing in order to have a happier, more peaceful life. Okay, girly, so let's get into it. One of the first things that I did was I did a reality check. So I looked at every part of my life and I realized that there was something that I wanted to fix. So for example, I wanted to be a certain figure, right? Um, with my fitness journey and I wanted um, basically abs. And I told myself, well, why are you so angry at yourself and not having abs when you're not looking at your habits? So I did an audit of my life. And I said, well, Joe, if you want abs, you got to stop eating bamboo shark and Kentucky. Okay? You have to stop eating fried foods. You have to find a way to do certain things that are different when it comes to your diet. And I invested in an air fryer and it's been making my life so much easier because now I'm eating the right things. I'm getting up and eating breakfast on time. Same thing with my finances. I finally took a look. Now, I ever had a spreadsheet of where my money was going. And for the first time in my life, at the ending part of 26 was when I started to really track where my money was going. However, I didn't use the data given. And it's almost like the word. We have the word of God, but we don't use it. And we get upset when life is making no sense. So I had the numbers and the data about where I was spending money or where I was overspending or maybe I should take, maybe when I go in the grocery store, I shouldn't pick up that item because it's going to stay in my cupboard for months on time because it's not something that I regularly would use in my diet. And then it, and it, I took a real look at my numbers and I actually applied biblical principles on finances for me to fix that. And by doing that, this also helped me in my fitness routine because I realized that 
I am more prone to be disciplined when it comes to my diet. If I'm on something consistently, I'm not those people that get bored with things very quickly or bored eating the same things over and over again. And if I do get bored, I will implement things in piece by piece. So I'll add a new dish, one new dish, not a whole breakfast, lunch, and dinner, okay? I also took an audit of my friendships and my relationships, and I realized that I have to start the type of people that I need around me is based on who I want to become. So then I started to look at things like maybe I need to go in these places and I need to neck with hair. So one of the things that I did to really be happier was give myself a reality check on what the hell is going on in my life. And I think sometimes, as women in particular, we are scared to face what the hell is going on. We are scared to face our walk with God. We are scared to face our finances. We are scared to face our feelings with ourselves. And I wrote down, how did I get here? Literally, like I wrote down in in, in my journal, I was like, okay, Joe, Write down what is wrong and then how did you get here? And we all know how we got to this point. So I started to see habits and decisions that I made in order for me to get to this place in life where I'm like, okay, this is not working out and I have to make sense. So one of the things I did was take an audit of my friggin' life. Number two, I deleted some social media apps. Now, if anybody knows Joshia, if you know me personally, you know I don't be on WhatsApp. I have a second phone, and that is my corporate phone, but I I turn that off when I'm not to work. I turn it off. I put it on silent, or I turn it off completely. And one of the things that has made me happier is taking a break from social medias. Even though I am a social media person, and many people be like, well, how are you doing that? And still giving out content, baby moderation. So I came off Instagram came off of Facebook. I have a scheduling app for TikTok. I literally only use YouTube and I use it for basically educational purposes. And I realize how much time social media took for me. And I understand how social media made me feel really bad about myself. And it made me feel like I was not moving fast enough Or my life was being slowed down and I was open to the criticism of the world. So being a person that really speaks on relationships, a lot of persons negatively speak about me not being in a relationship with what is not neither here or there. I can very well be in a relationship, but I just choose not to share that part of my life on social media. And I realized that Being on social media heavily, you are open to the court of public opinion at all time. And because of the content that I put out, I realized that I have to make sure that when I am in the court of public opinion, it ain't about the things that that's going to really hurt me. Okay. I know persons are going to critique the podcast. I know persons are going to critique my work. Okay. Because I am a creator, but am I going to allow persons to critique personal experiences in my life? No. Am I going to allow persons to critique my relationships? No. Am I going to allow persons to critique my um, career? No, I'm not putting that out there. So one of the things that I did by taking a step back from these social medias and deleting those apps off my phone as I work, as I'm in body hibernation is making me come back to reality. I'm very in touch with reality right now. I am in touch so greatly with reality that it's almost, it's almost like I realize how much time and how much joy social media takes from you. So if you want to be happier in life, I, 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 I highly recommend just taking a step back from social media. Another thing that I did to increase the happiness in my life is not checking my phone first thing in the morning. And I try my best to keep my phone on to do not disturb until I finish at the gym. So I'm not checking my phone till late morning. Why would you want to wake up to a world full of chaos? Because that's what's going on right now. And I realized the less... I am consumed by what's going on in the world. The more happier I am, the more focused and the more clear-minded I am when I decide to go and get things done in my life. 
the next thing that I did in order to live a happier life was actually letting go of any toxic relationship that I had with myself and others. This required me to do a lot of forgiveness. This required me, and for the first time in my life, I am not upset about not talking to somebody after I forgave them. I am no longer, I, I don't feel the need to have somebody looking at my life to prove a point. So I really decided to just let go of toxic relationships with myself. And I wrote down um, um, with others and myself. And when it came to the toxic relationship that I had with myself, this is, I ain't, I'm not pursuing any goal. The only goal that I am pursuing right now, girlies, is to be happy. And even though you may be like, that's a, that ain't a goal. Yes, that is. It is after you have been through a lot in your life. And I have seen all forms of abuse in my life. I have seen a lot of hurt in my life. I have went through a lot in my life. And for the first time, my only goal is me. Is not, is not a business goal. It is not a... It's not a goal that I think is going to make me look good. It is My goal is just me. My goal is my weight. My goal is my habits. My goal is my happiness. It's, it's absolutely nobody else but me. And in order for me to have that relationship with myself, I had to let go of toxic thinking. And I had to forgive myself for a lot of things. Another thing that I am doing in order to stay happy is I am personally making it my business to shut the hell up. I am no longer that person that wants to prove a point. I look at comments even right now on my TikTok and I don't answer them. Like, whatever, you you can continue with yourself in the comments. I am blocking and deleting. I don't feel the need or feel bad if I don't reply back to somebody. Okay? That's what I am doing right now. Literally, just shutting the hell up. Being quiet is so much power in being quiet. Another thing that I'm doing to keep happy is forgiving myself even when I mess up instantly. Forgiving myself automatically. If I decided like yesterday, I almost flipped. I was almost in my unhinged employee era and I almost flipped out. And I just remember crying out of frustration yesterday. And... I said to myself, it's okay, Joe. You're going to have days like this and now we're going to keep it going. So I don't feel bad saying, oh, I need to start over again. Because I was that type of person, like if I mess up, it was almost like a 75 hard challenge. I need to start over again. No, you don't need to start over again. You Consistency looks like an up and down hill. Some days you're going to have 100. Then some days you're going to be at 20. But the fact remains you're consistent. Also, this morning, I did not go for a morning run and I felt no type of way because I deep cleaned my home. I mopped. I mopped. I love mopping my my tiles. I love changing my rabbit cage and I love meal prepping. I still did everything else that I usually do on a Sunday, but I said, you know what? I feel tired because I had a rough day yesterday and today I can give myself a break because I have been going Sunday morning run very consistently. So what is Monday? And I didn't beat myself up about that. Okay. Literally, that's what I do. The next thing that I'm doing in order for me to be happier and I recommend everybody else do this is I am literally... I am literally okay not being okay sometimes. I'm okay because I am human and emotion change and things happen. Honestly, it's okay. And I think, I think this world that we live in has put us in such a hot, a a culture of saying that you always have to be at a hundred when nobody's life is always at a hundred nobody's life is always at a hundred. Another thing that I'm also doing in order for me to live a very happy life is that I no longer overthink about my past and I definitely am not stressing about the future. The Bible tells us tomorrow has its own concerns and issues. Why do you stress over tomorrow? 
Tomorrow will take care of itself. You need to focus on now. I am no longer stressed out about a future, especially when I have goals in, in like, I have steps to reach a goal. So for example, if I, I have a savings goal, I'm no longer stressing out on the day the savings goal will actually be at that particular moment. I am just enjoying the moment of saying, yes, today I was disciplined and I actually saved. Today I didn't do impulsive buying. Like I am enjoying those micro moments in my present because I cannot control the future. I only, I could, I can't even control right now. You understand? Because I can't control where it rains or shines, right? I only can control things that are in my direct, you know, vicinity. So if it's if it's raining or or it's sunshine today, I I can control my mood, but I can't control the weather. So I'm now learning those things. Another thing, and I think this is last but not least, is that I'm gonna I'm gonna give you all a bonus after this. I no longer allow people to project their insecurities on me. So I'm no longer allowing people to tell me what I could do from what I can't do. I'm no longer allowing people to tell me that. They think that I am not good enough at something. I'm no longer allowing anybody to make me feel as if that because they don't see it my way, that it's no way. So I'm no longer allowing persons to project their insecurities on me. And this takes a lot of work. Okay? And for a bonus, I am no longer treating myself badly. See, when you treat yourself badly, people treat you the same. And I realized when I show myself love... And I show myself boundaries and I respect them. People around me respect it. I no longer treat myself badly by saying that I am not going to do something for myself because there's much more things in the future to do. So right now, I am enjoying those present moments. I'm enjoying understanding myself. I'm enjoying realizing that this is a journey. I'm enjoying looking in the mirror at myself and just loving myself. That's what I am enjoying. And another bonus that I am doing to keep myself happier these days is trying new things that align with the life that I want to have. And I think a lot of times because we are in the age of social media, we are in the age of being exposed to so much at one time, we we try to pick up on everything somebody is doing. I'm not friggin' doing that anymore because it's going to leave you confused. So I am only doing things that align with what I want to do. So for example, if I, if when it comes to my self-care, there are, there are women who have different self-care routines. There are some that believe in getting fillers, facial balance, all of that stuff, right? Getting, going, getting some new teeth. That's their form of self-care. I ain't going to put myself in that kind of self-care. My self-care for me is going to be taking up Pilates, Sitting on the beach to smell the seawater. Making homemade hair treatments in my kitchen. (laughs) Those are the things that I want to do for self-care because they align with what I see myself as in the higher woman. So I'm not picking up everything that I see out there because there are so much different forms of self-care. So my self-care is going to be different from the other woman. So I, the other woman may like, She may go to the spa for, I don't know, a seaweed wrap. When I'm going to the spa for laser hair removal on my face. So we have two different self-care routines. So I am now learning to create a self-care routine that is applicable to my life. I'm not going to pick up everything out there. Because a lot of times we feel like what may work for somebody may work for the other. What the hell are you here getting facial balancing for when I'm only 27 and I look at my... Like, listen to me. My friends and even even my partner, they always look at my face and be like, Wow, Joe, your skin is beautiful. So for me, certain things I just don't want to do. So I may not be the one who needs to go, What is the face... What is that skincare um, treatment where... They put the needles in your face and like the little like like little blood pockets happen on the face in order to make you look younger. No, I'm not gonna do that. I may just simply need to go and put on some sunscreen and get a normal facial. So my routine 
for self-care, for me to be happy and not to feel overwhelmed to stay on trend, I'm doing things that's going to be in line with what I want to be as the higher woman. So that means sitting in the sauna twice a month, if that's my routine, that's my routine. If this next woman routine is making sure that she gets her lip fillers, not knocking fillers, making sure she gets a lip filler every month, then she could do that. But create your self-care routine to what you want. So my self-care routine may be going to the supermarket and making flower arrangements for my home every, every week. Your self-care routine may be just journaling on the beach. Create your self-care routine for you to remain happy. These are the things that I'm doing to be happier these days. And I hope it works for you too. And notice that this is some advice anybody can take. And then some advice you tailor to you. And as I go on this insightful journey, I want you to know one of the things that really has made me happier is putting God first. Letting him be in my life. Letting him show me stuff. Letting him convict me when I am wrong. Letting him be present has made me extremely happy. Thank you for coming to another Level Up with Joshia, the podcast, but your girl, Joshia, and I'll see you girlies next time. Bye.